Lights. Camera. Action. Hey cinephiles, it's hard to believe we're already a month deep into 2019. Plenty of us are still catching up with everything we wanted to see from last year, but that's not going to stop hundreds of new films from releasing in our immediate future. There are so many films to look forward to, but I've whittled my list down to the 10 films I'm most eager to get my eyes on in 2019. For Cineflect, I'm J.S. Lewis. Let's start the countdown. Number 10. Knives Out. Ryan Johnson has made a career subverting genre expectations, a high school noir, a caper comedy, a time travel hitman flick, and the most divisive Star Wars film ever made. He's decided to take a break from the galaxy far, far away before helming an entirely new trilogy with Knives Out, which has only been described as a modern murder mystery in the classic whodunit style. The insane cast includes Daniel Craig, Chris Evans, Lakeith Stanfield, Anna de Amis, Michael Shannon, Don Johnson, Jamie Lee Curtis, Tony Collette, Christopher Plummer, and it wouldn't be a Ryan Johnson film without Kid Blue himself, Noah Sagan. Yeah! Knives Out plunges into the multiplex on November 27th. Number 9, Emma. Three years ago, Pablo Lorraine had three distinct works of art released in the States. The Club, Neruda, and Jackie. I saw those in rapid succession and was immediately convinced I need to see everything the acclaimed Chilean filmmaker makes. For this film, he has reteamed with the great Gael Garcia Bernal and newcomer Di Girolamo. He's a dance choreographer, she's a school teacher, and their marriage takes a hit after an adoption goes awry. But instead of hashing things out verbally, the characters reportedly express their emotions through dance. Sign me up for another sensory drama from Lorraine. Number 8, Avengers Endgame. 20 films in the Marvel Cinematic Universe plus the upcoming Captain Marvel have all been leading to this, an unparalleled feat that exemplifies the concept of event filmmaking. When Infinity War released last spring, I was impressed by the gall of its cliffhanger ending, but I also couldn't help feeling that I'd only seen half of a movie. Will Endgame suffer the same side effects or justify the entire experience? We'll find out soon. The wait is less than three months away as Endgame releases everywhere on April 26th. This is gonna work, Steve. I know it is. Because I don't know what I'm gonna do if it doesn't. Number 7. The King After loving both Animal Kingdom and The Rover, writer-director David Machad earned a permanent bleep on my radar. While his third film, War Machine, was a sore disappointment, I love a good redemption story. And speaking of good stories, it's one thing to be adapting a Shakespeare play, it's another to adapt three. Albeit combining both parts of Henry IV with Henry V should make for one hell of a historical epic. And with Netflix footing the bill, money is no object. Wonderkin Timothée Chalamet stars as King Henry V, while Ben Mendelsohn plays his daddy. Robert Pattinson, Sean Harris, and 2018 breakout star Thomas and McKenzie co-star, along with Machad co-writer and frequent collaborator Joel Edgerton. Look forward to The King whenever Netflix decides to drop it. Number 6, Midsummer. This list wouldn't be complete without some horror, and I only needed to look in the rearview mirror to the very best from last year, Hereditary. Breakout writer-director Ari Aster already has his follow-up in the can. Jack Rayner and my current obsession, Florence Pugh, star as a couple who visit Sweden to attend a midsummer festival where all hell breaks loose. Thinking back on the ending of Hereditary, I'm confident Astor will pull out any and all stops for this pagan nightmare. A24 has midsummer fittingly scheduled for August 9th. Mommy, mommy, please, I'm you, I'm Number 5, Star Wars, Episode 9. After Ryan Johnson took over flight controls on The Last Jedi, J.J. Abrams is taking them back to bring this 40-year saga in for a landing. 
Of course, there are no plot details to speak of yet, but surely the ensemble of new and old, including the anticipated return of Billy D. Williams as Lando Calrissian, will have to fight to restore order and bring equilibrium to the Force. All our burning questions will finally be answered on December 20th. Number 4. The Lighthouse. I've gone on the record for saying 2016 was one of the best years for horror ever, and I even made a video counting down my 10 favorite, which I'll link to in the description. At the very top of that list was The Witch, the stark yet stunning, no holds barred directorial debut from one Robert Eggers. Horror fans have been hungry for whatever he would make next. Set in 20th century Maine, this is the story of an aging lighthouse keeper named Old, played by now four-time Oscar nominee Willem Dafoe. Robert Pattinson, who has completely course-corrected his career after a certain series that shall not be named, co-stars. Equally promising is that the witch cinematographer Jaron Blaschk has shot the film in black and white 35mm. I cannot wait to see this in the theater when A24 distributes later this year. Number 3. Ad Astra New York writer-director James Gray kept to Empire City for the first leg of his career, churning out artful and respectable fare like Two Lovers and The Immigrant, but surprised his devotees with 2017's The Lost City of Z, an incredible adventure drama set between the worlds of Great Britain and the Amazon rainforests. Now he's leaving Earth's orbit altogether for a sci-fi epic that follows Roy McBride, played by Brad Pitt, an Army Corps engineer navigating our solar system to find his father, played by Tommy Lee Jones. Gray has compared his story to Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness and said he wants to make the most realistic depiction of space travel that's been put in a movie. It's that level of ambition from an artist I deeply respect that puts Ad Astra so high on my list. Here's hoping this can join the pantheon of great 21st century space films when it hits the big screen on May 24th. Number 2. The Irishman Scorsese, De Niro, Pacino, Pesci, Cannavale, Romano. That's a lot of Italian blood for a film called The Irishman, but seeing as this is a film about the labor union, mob connections, and the killing, question mark, of Jimmy Hoffa, from men attached to the greatest gangster films of all time, I don't have a problem with that. Do you have a problem with that? What's more, this is the highest profile Netflix film to date, with the streaming giant reportedly paying upwards of $200 million for the production budget alone making this the single most expensive film of Scorsese's career. A big chunk of that cost is coming from ILM's work on the film. Visual effects are reported to feature De Niro, Pacino, and Pesci as 30 years younger. We've seen Marvel use such technology to remarkable effect, but this sounds like they're relying on it a whole lot more. I could see this being another crime epic or a bizarre trek through the uncanny valley. Either way, I cannot wait to see this whenever and however Netflix decides to unleash it on the world. Number one, once Upon a Time in Hollywood. If I could only see one film in 2019, it would without a doubt be the ninth film from one of my favorite writer-directors, Quentin Tarantino. Both a continuation of his period piece Hot Streak and a return to Los Angeles where his career began nearly 30 years ago with Reservoir Dogs. The film is set in 1969 amidst the backdrop of the notorious Manson murders. Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt star as a TV actor and his stunt double, but they're just the tip of the iceberg ensemble, including Margot Robbie, Al Pacino, Emile Hirsch, Damien and Lewis, Bruce Dern, Dakota Fanning, and so many more. Tarantino has never been shy with his pop culture references and paying homage, and I suspect this will be a love letter to New Hollywood the likes we've never seen before. I accidentally stumbled onto the set of this film. Seriously, it was an accident. Check the description for more details. And it was like stepping back in time. And guess what, cinephiles? The best part is we only have to wait until July 26th to inject this one straight into our hearts. That's my list of the most anticipated films of 2019. I'm sure your list looks different, so please share it in the comments below. Of course, for every list, there's another list of films you had to leave off. Some I'm not convinced will be released this year, others just missed the cut. And so I've included 30 honorable mentions in the description. For Cineflect, I'm JS Lewis. Thanks for watching.